Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Steelers Chat. And today we have Nick Farabaugh from Pittsburgh Sports Now. How you doing, Nick? I missed you. I'm doing super well, D. Thanks for having me back on. It's great to be on as always. Love to talk Steelers, football, whatever. It's been busy, but hope you're doing really well. I am. I am. So like the last time we talked, it was after the Bengals win in week one. So it's been a long, long time. And we were excited about the Steelers defense. Then I want to know how you feel about them right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is a tough question. It's like, uh, they're very talented, clearly, but they're very flawed. Um, and, and I think that's kind of how I feel about them, um, even yeah. with T.J. Watt back. Like, this is a secondary that definitely needs more help um, than it has right now. I think that's become very clear. TJ's definitely not been that healthy, even when he's come back. And now he's got that rib injury that's that's hampering him, too. Um, TJ just does not look like TJ. Um, and, yeah. But, but, like, the cool thing about TJ is the fact that he is TJ Watt. Teams still play him like he's TJ Watt. Yep. But – it was interesting last week because they were letting Watt go one on one and they were sliding to Highsmith. And I was like, oh, I think teams are starting to recognize that that TJ is a really that's the to. threat. That's the beauty. It is. You and love like it. having talent. <laughs> yeah, and like that's the cool thing. Like, I think the Steelers have a legitimate duo as their outside linebackers right now because Highsmith is having a Pro Bowl season uh mm -hmm. right now. I mean, he's got over 10 sacks for the first first time in his career uh he looks awesome and like to me that has been cool i froze there yeah for a second. but <laughs> got you back i don't know why but let, let me restart but for me that's that's like been the biggest thing this year is just getting alex, alex highsmith going and having him kind of put everything together like that's been huge the secondary hasn't been superb um the, the safety they've, play has I they've had some bumps and bruises right even like when yep. the whole secondary was out against the the tampa bay yeah and then um, they you know just some switching and kilo uh, hasn't been witherspoon hasn't been healthy for a while and he's on mm -hmm. ir and you know you i don't i don't know if we'll get to see him again or or what but yeah. um you know there's been a lot of changes in that secondary but levi wallace has somehow been able to stand out yeah, I mean, Levi's been decent enough. Cam's probably been their best corner. Um, I still think they have the need for an, an alpha in that group, right? Um, and that's like the thing when you talk about draft time, when you see people already talking about that, that's why corner comes up. Um, they just, they, Levi's a good complimentary piece. Cam Sutton, a really good complimentary piece, right? But when you put him against Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, um, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, and all of that, that's um, what I'm worried about. That December 24th matchup, Devontae Adams. What are we gonna do there? How are we gonna? I know I'm I'm jumping ahead here because we have the Ravens first and Carolina next, but I still have Devontae Adams on my calendar. It's not the Raiders, but it's Devontae Adams. <laughs> yeah, like you get scared so whenever worried. you face Devontae Adams. Like every a lot of top receivers this year have had great games against the Steelers. Jamar Chase did in week one, uh, even when they won. Um, I, you can remember um, that Amari Cooper had a great game on Thursday night in Cleveland. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of really great games against the Steelers this year um, from their receivers. Drake London had a pretty good game last week, um, even though, you know, they still won. Um, that's still been true. Uh, T. Higgins had a great game. I mean, yeah. he was probably – he was one of the most single biggest reasons the Steelers lost that second matchup. Um, they're just, they just haven't had a, a guy to, to go to, to like be okay. When, when we need to match tit for tat, we need to match Jimmy's for Joe's, right? Who's the guy that's going to, going to match the alpha guy on the other side. I don't think they have that guy yet. Sometimes yeah, I think yeah. it can be Cam Sutton. I will say that. I think Cam Sutton has shown ability to do that, but I think they need a guy that, that can push the ceiling up. And I think that's been one of the biggest issues. I also think their linebacker play has been very up and down. Um, I'm just not sure who the like best linebacker of the group is, but I think it's been Devin Bush. Like, yeah, I think it's been Devin Bush. And I hate to ask this question: Who you think is the weakest? Because I just I don't like highlighting it much, but I'm just curious to know who you think out of the group. Oh, it's, it's Spillane. Um, unfortunately, like. Spillane's cool and all, and he plays big hits, and he's a 
good run defender and he's a great special teamer. Run through a brick wall for his teammates. Um, yeah. it's cool to have guys like that, but there's zero 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 reason for him to be the dime dime linebacker. Like, why is he on the field on third down so much? Um, they keep saying communication, but I have find it a hard time to say Devin Bush and Miles Jack can't just do that too. Um, Devin Bush should probably be the three down linebacker every time. Like, I don't get that. He gets toasted in coverage way too much. And that has been a key that we have seen teams yeah. on third down just go after Robert Spillane. And yeah. he just does not have it. And and but, Miles Jack yeah. started off pretty strong, recently has fallen down a little bit, a little banged up, I would imagine. Yeah, I think it's a, it's injuries. I don't think he's healthy. Um, exactly. You know, he's been playing through some stuff. And I, I've seen it on the field, him just trying to play and fight through it. So uh, who knows? He's not popping up on injury reports, but I think he's battling some things, um, you know, that could be impacting his performance. Yeah, I uh, agree. Um, but yeah, he his place falling off. But Devin Bush has kind of been pretty solid this year. But I, I still think that room is is something to look at too. And And then again, you just have all the injuries up front that have kind of worn down that group. You know, Larry Ogan, Joe, he's been hurt all year. Uh, he hasn't been 100%. Um, mm-hmm. TJ Watt has not been 100%. Um, so it's just been kind of one thing after another with this group. But they do have holes to fix. They definitely need another corner. They need some linebackers in there. But it's a solid defense. I don't think it's an elite defense like we thought it would be uh, in week one. But it is a solid defense, and they have enough talent, obviously, through acquisitions um, outside and, and through the draft that – they're a decent enough defense still. So coming into this matchup uh, against Baltimore, do you think, because their defense is pretty, pretty good. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to take that anything away from them. Their defense is pretty solid with this being Kenny's first matchup against them. And when we last talked, Mitchell Trubisky was our starting quarterback. <laughs> um, do you think the Steelers – are going to be able to execute the run to the level that they've been executing the last couple of weeks? I think that's the question. Now, they did it against the Colts defense, and the Colts defense statistically is one of the best run defenses mm-hmm. in the NFL. Um, so that's a good sign. But you do look in this stretch at who they have faced and when they run the ball. The Saints had a ton of injuries up front that week um, that they ran for 200-plus against them. Whatever. I think the performance against the Bengals is a bit more impressive where you run pretty well. They get DJ Reader back. You have Trey Hendrickson still in that group. I think you can you can hang your hat there. And I think you can hang your hat against Indy. I think it's a really good run defense. That's been their one pure strength all year. Mm-hmm. And the Steelers gashed them. Um, and last week against the, the Falcons, of course, that was expected. The Falcons' weakness is run defense. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you this. I call them the Hawks, but. Okay. Yeah, just like look at the front though for for the Ravens, right? Yeah. Like you have Calais Campbell still there, yes, Justin Calais Houston. Vet. Um, Roquan is is now there, of course. You can't forget Roquan Smith. They have really, really they have a really, really solid group in that front. And it's a deep group. They rotate a lot. And then um, even you go another layer, Patrick Queen, who's been like yeah. a menace to, um, you know, these these quarterbacks. Like these guys, these guys are, are pretty tough. Yeah, right. And he has, and and you can look up the the Ravens' run defense, and it will come in as one of the worst in terms of gross statistic of yardage. But they really only average giving up three point eight yards per carry. I mean, it's not crazy um, i think in like gross yards they're like 26 but in yards per carry they're like ninth um so it's big difference um so don't just take like the gross numbers um and just say oh they're not a good run they just get the ball run against them a lot because they have two really good cornerbacks that's uh-huh. what people are afraid of and then and i i i attribute that to that and i think people are so afraid of the marlon uh humphreys and the marcus peters and and those guys and you have kyle hamilton out there um, they're, I think they're afraid to throw to those guys. Yeah. Um, so they do uh, typically run the ball more against the Ravens. But I think yeah. our run game is really shining up to be something pretty. It, and, it looks um, great, right? Yeah. But this and, is going to be. that's one of the conversations we had about Matt Canada and his play calling in the beginning. So just taking what, we, what we've done with the run, how do you see, um, how well do you see Matt Canada's play calling evolving at this point? 
Yeah, and so this is going to be the big test for the run game. I would imagine mm-hmm. they're still going to run the ball decently well. They have until that – that is a buzzsaw right now. I mean, they have the fifth most rushing yard since the bye week in the NFL, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like Matt Canada's play calling has naturally gotten better just because his, his whole scheme is based off running the football. Like, you have to run the football to, to get Matt Canada's scheme going, right? Otherwise, why is the motion happening or anything? If you right. don't run the football in Matt Canada's scheme, the Nothing. scheme doesn't work. Yeah. Um, now, there are questions about the scheme inherently anyways that I don't love. Um, but I think he, he has done really, 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 really much better. He still has two or three calls per game where you're like, what are you doing? What, is, right? what happened? What, like, what, what was that? <laughs> why'd you need to hand the ball off to Gunnar Olszewski on the final drive against Atlanta when Najee Harris was just was just going, right? I mean, there are questions about that sometimes. But I think he's done a nice job of getting Kenny Pickett able to, to kind of attack every area of the field. I think the rushing game has been really diverse and, and has been able to kind of mix and match different styles. I think it's been a really good assortment there. Is he the answer in the future? I still don't think so. I still think Matt Cannon is a below average NFL offensive coordinator, um, but he has been much better. And that's really what happens when your guys start to play better, right? Yeah. And the players are just executed a lot better. Kenny Pickett's yeah. looked more comfortable. The running game has looked awesome. Uh, the, the receivers, eh, we'll see. The receivers have been up and down, right? But My favorite receiver right now. It's Pat Frymuth. <laughs> like yeah. he's my guy. Like yeah, right. That is the guy. Anchor yeah, Muth. Like, I'm sorry. I've said I'm not calling him Pat Frymuth anymore. Pat Anchor Muth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't it's it. Like, it's like that's the thing though. Like Frymuth's been the one consistent guy out of everyone. Deontay Johnson's a up and down roller coaster. George Pickens is a rookie who's still learning the game and is, you know, he's he's got. To kind of learn with defenses, kind of slide his way and everything now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then outside of those three, I mean, they just have not gotten anything. I mean, straight up, like I'm talking from Steven Sims, Miles Boykin, Gunnar Olszewski, they just haven't gotten anything. Since they traded Chase Claypool, that slot has just been nothing. It's just been those yeah. three and the run game. And, and so has Matt Canada been a lot better? Yeah. I think he's naturally appeared to be a lot better just because – of the run. If it wasn't yeah. for the run game, oh my goodness, they his yeah. his bags would be packed on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's not like it's not like he's doing anything different schematically that's making the run right. game click. The offensive line is clicking better. Najee Harris is running better. It's just things like that. He's just running basic stuff. I mean, every every offense coordinator runs the type of schemes he does. Now he deserves credit for it, but again, you kind of just look at his scheme inherently. It's just. Some of the motion is, is straight up useless. It puts you in disadvantages at times pre-snap. Um, some of the some of the play calls don't work in certain areas of the field. That dang su- shovel option, running it on second and 10 from the 30-yard line makes zero sense. I think um, the penalties are kind of yeah. um, a reflection of that motion, all, you know, just the play call in general. Um, and, and the, of course, the league has clacked, clock, uh, clamped down on that ineligible man downfield have you noticed that it it does feel like it's been very steeler centric i'll say that Mm -hmm. um i'm not sure if i've seen it when i've watched i have seen it in other games but it's definitely something i feel like they probably looked at over the summer and was like okay we we gotta stop this it's happening too much yeah steelers are like and like it's a tough thing on the those rpos because it's only they're only allowed one yard, right? And so it's either I think for the Steelers one, I think it's Kenny um, learning the rookie ropes, holding the ball a little too long, and getting his lineman uh, kind of caught in the water, if you will. Sometimes um, I also just think that it's a rule that probably needs to be amended in some way. I mean, mm-hmm. because what you're going to get happening at some point is is why can't say a defensive lineman at some point just kind of drop back, right? And, and just kind of bait the guy almost into to coming downfield with him. And that's kind of what's going to end mm-hmm. up happening and what's probably ended up happening. Um, the moment you see an RPO, you're probably going to bait the lineman downfield. Um, and, and why wouldn't you? Um, and so I look at the rule and it, I know what it's used for. And I think it's a smart rule, of course. I just think the RPO part of it, makes it a lot harder um, of a component to kind of enact 
And the Steelers mm-hmm. have the most ineligible man downfield penalties in the NFL. So clearly they need to learn um, just how to how to shut it down a little bit more. I think they have in recent weeks at least. Now it's been the false starts that have really been getting to them. Yeah. Um, it, it's been, it, it just, it just Dan Moore. Yeah. Dan Moore has nine penalties on him mm-hmm. this year. Um, that is, the rest of the entire line is like 15. I mean, Dan Moore has mo- the most penalties on this offensive line by a wide margin. I think it's like the s- second most in the NFL right now for among offensive tackles. It's too much. Um, nice. Deontay That's Johnson crazy. has a weird amount of false starts for a wide receiver. Wide receivers should never be getting false starts. Why are you getting a false start as a receiver? Um, I mean, the one in Atlanta last week, he just fell out of his stance. Like, he just didn't keep his balance. It was it was very weird. It um, was hard for me to see that from where I was standing. Um, so, but that's interesting um, to to kind of take a look at that. It when I hear Dan Moore's name, it takes me back to every time I hear heard um, Villanueva's name back in the day. <laughs> It's yeah, like, oh, I mean, no, another one, another false start. Hey, man, listen, Dan Moore's been actually decent on the field-wise um, playing, but th- he's got to fix that one. I mean, that yeah. that is something you got to fix as a second-year guy, and that's really been the biggest negative on his, that's his all plate the right now. Remember. Um, yeah. and, and all the like, fans are going to remember are all the times they heard your name and you made us move backwards, Yep, especially in the red zone. <laughs> and that's been the thing, right, in the Steelers' offense, and this is why you can't completely – could it put him back in again? Why every time you get inside the 30 yard line, even it's not even in the red zone sometimes? Yeah, not even. Is your offense just why is it good between the 20s and mm-hmm. why does it die out and why do you keep selling for three? Part of it's the inherent scheme of Matt Canada, part of it's a really lousy job of execution. Um, and 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 you as an offense cannot keep getting penalties in that area yeah. of the field or negative plays and, and it just seems like at some point every time in every drive it's like a 14 play for 50 yard drive that's eight up like six minutes of clock like that is not sustainable you gotta get chunk plays at some gotta point get, right yeah yeah i get chunk plays some of that's on kenny pickett too um kenny pickett has not thrown an interception in over a what i think it's 128 balls now which is great yeah, he's also not since the, uh, since the bye week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and like that's great, but he's also at times still missed some throws. Um, and you see guys running in the same areas sometimes for routes. Um, it's not a well coached offense, like that is still true. The play calling has gotten better, there's no mm-hmm. doubt about that because they've executed better and because Canada has simplified some things. But the coaching, the inherent coaching, the penalties. Um, running the same routes, like in the same area. Like, why is that happening? The inherent offensive coaching of this offense still gets in their way all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. And I do want to give them some praise, though, because I do appreciate them holding on to the ball for the amount of time they've been able to have possession. Um, that is something in the beginning that was a big problem for me. The defense continuously running out on that field, them not holding on to the ball, um, them not winning the time of possession game. Um, and you can attribute that to the run game being successful now. I get that. And I'm happy for that for them. And then the third quarter, which has been our nemesis. They did a lot better against Atlanta. They actually scored in the third quarter. Um, the third quarter of the previous weeks, it's just like where the offense just falls apart. They fall asleep and they maybe wake up in the fourth. Um, yeah. I, I just don't know. Like what happens, you know, they made some adjustments and did some improvements this week in, last week in Atlanta. But like, what do you think's happening in the third quarter with this team? It's weird, um, right? Um, because even though they scored, right, make it nineteen to, th- to, th- to three at one point, um, Atlanta still scored ten, what, thirteen points in that quarter. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, they, the Steelers have been outscored in the third quarter the last three weeks. That's Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and Atlanta, thirty-one to six in the third quarter. Why is that happening? It's very weird. Now, in the fourth quarter, it seems like they they turn things back on a little bit, especially defensively. Why is right. there a lapse in def- defensively coming out of the half for the first three or four drives? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, they're, they're great in the first half. They come out in the third quarter. Something happens. Um, against the Colts, it was that Matt Ryan found the magic and, and just shredded the secondary. Yeah. Against the Falcons, Cordero Patterson ran wild 
against the Steelers. Yeah, the they Bengals. was like, we're just going to run the ball. We're just going to keep running, and yeah. there's nothing you can do to stop it. And against the Bengals, I mean, it wasn't like the, the Colts and the Falcons, right? They were scoring in the first half regardless, but the, the Steelers defense never adjusted to stopping T. Higgins or Samaj P. Brown. And so that has been something that you look at and you're like, why is the defense? I mean, they're getting a lot of time off on the field. Mm -hmm. And so why aren't they continuing that? I think part of it is, is the beat up nature of this front. I think you don't have the game changer up front right now. That's making those plays. And, and again, TJ, even in the one-on-one -on -one areas, just it, it's, he's just not the same guy. And now they're starting to realize that, and, and Alex Highsmith is getting the attention. So that puts the onus on Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi. And I think that's down the stretch is where you saw Cam Hayward really step up, Larry Ogunjobi make a few plays. I thought the interior line really made a few plays. And then, of course, Minka Fitzpatrick um, making a great play down the stretch to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just feel like – it's a slow start for the team as a whole, too, because let's not absolve the offense here, right? They score 16. Um, they score – I think they scored 16 back-to-back -back weeks. They scored 20 against the Bengals, right? They score a ton in the first half, and then, like, the first three or four drives of the third quarter, it's like they, they just – they don't – Three and out. Yeah. Three and out. It's like three, three and out, or they <laughs> maybe get two first downs and then punt it. So why why does the offense then come out flat too, right? It's a team thing. And 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 in special teams has hurt them at times too. The big kick return against um Indianapolis. Yep. Uh, I mean, you cannot have these slow second half starts. And that's something where you have to place the blame on Mike Tomlin for that one. Um and, and it's and you don't want to you, you know always you're like, who do you want blame for these issues? Right. Well, if it's a team wide thing, if it's the defense, the offense, and the special teams. You're looking it's at that coach. one. It's either one, all three of your coordinators suck. <laughs> that could be it. Or it's <laughs> one, or it's two. Man, Coach T, like, get Let's your guys go. rallied up for the second half here. Why? Why, why is that an issue? Juice. And then, <laughs> yeah, it, it, like it's it's like why why does that happen? Um, and, and I feel like that has been something that has happened in the past. I don't think it's just a this year thing. I, I've seen it happen in the past with Mike Tomlin-led teams. So I'm not quite sure what Mike Tomlin has to do to fix it. It's a weird team. It's a young team that's getting battle-tested, which is good. Um, the Colts game was a real gut check for the Steelers. Mm -hmm. um, being essentially dominating that game from snap to snap the whistle in the first half and then getting absolutely punched in the mouth the yes. whole third quarter in the beginning of the fourth quarter to go down 17 to 16. Nasty. Listen, Nasty. That oh, he, he, gross. Yes. And it's like, you know, here we go again. We're right back here again. Oh and man. Like, listen, they tried to lose that game. They tried to lose yeah. that game. I'll tell you who won that Indianapolis game. Kenny Pickett. Like that was the most encouraged I've been by Kenny Pickett his whole career thus far. That touchdown drive he had, that third and nine throw to George Pickens over the middle, level up play. I mean, yeah. that was a level up drive for a rookie. They won that game because of Kenny Pickett. And that's the first time I think I could really say in his career, Steelers won because of Kenny Pickett. And so I think that that was a really good thing. Kenny Pickett is getting a, a little bit of a gut check here. And his offense is too. And the offense has been able to at least pick the defense up. Like, He's right, like, confidence. even in, I, I said it a few times, um, this week, watching him throw that ball, step up in the in that mess, the catastrophic pocket that it was to Connor Hay Haywood in the end zone. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he took whatever came his way. Yeah. Like, I was proud perfect. to see it. I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah. Like, listen, he's not perfect, but he's looking better. And and I think that's always the positive. And the cool thing about even the offense having those slow starts is the defense has picked up the Steelers offense all year or has had to do it all year. Yes. Well, okay. The defense has been, has been struggling recently. So the offense has done the picking up the past two weeks. And I think that's been a nice little change of pace, right? The, the defense yeah, was yeah. just reeling, clearly reeling after it, it became 19 to 16 and the Steelers had six minutes on the clock. So they went out and shaved off nearly the whole clock. I'm um, through the yeah. right. That like that is what you need. That's complimentary football. And so the, team, I, th I, I think it's been win. nice to see the team offense win. step up a little bit. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So let's just go ahead and wrap with this Ravens game. Lamar Jackson um is 
most likely not playing. I heard uh, John Harbaugh say it's most likely going to be Huntley here. Um, we were familiar with him uh, last year playing the last game of the season against him. Um, not too different than Lamar, but a little different than Lamar. I feel like they may throw a little bit more, but he's also a threat with his legs. So how do you see this uh, this game kind of turning out? What's your prediction? Yeah, Huntley's no Lamar. Um, people <laughs> look at them and say, ah, oh, they're mobile. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. Now oh, they're pretty different. Um, first of all, Lamar's arm is just way better. Uh, Lamar's got a cannon on his thing. But it's, what's the weird thing is they they will call more like throws for Huntley. They will They'll put more receivers and, on the field for Huntley. Mm -hmm. I don't and know it, if it's just like a preference, like maybe Lamar wants the tight ends. I don't know what it is. So, but isn't that strange? Yeah. So here's the thing with Lamar, right? Lamar has grown into being a pocket passer after he was mostly a runner in college. Mm -hmm. Now he's still a great runner. So even outside design runs, Lamar is like Houdini out there and he'll run whenever. Right. Now he is a, he's a pass first run second guy still when he's throwing, but Huntley has always been a pocket first guy. So yeah, he can run, but he operates in the pocket and he's a rhythmic thrower. He's like, Kenny Pickett wants to get the ball out quick. Um, if you look at Kenny and he can throw in rhythm and he can throw with anticipation, all of that, right? Think of how big Ben was his, his last two years, right? Where he was, okay, get it out, get it out, get it out. Yeah, Tyler Huntley, get it out. Tyler Huntley, <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah, right? Like Tyler Huntley, though, gets it out quick and he's a rhythmic thrower. So they're different. Lamar isn't as much a rhythmic thrower. Not that he can't be that. But they don't really ask him to be. Why? Because he can create so much outside the pocket, so they're going to try and get plays down the field. I don't think they're going to try and do that as much with Tyler Huntley. Um, so they're different. As runners, too, man, you just can't replicate Lamar. Um, Lamar's elusiveness, his his speed, his explosiveness, um, he, he's elite. And, and Huntley is good, right? And I just don't know if he's as slippery, if he's as dangerous. If Tyler Huntley has the ball in his hands, I'm going to be worried about him. Sure. Am I going to be worried about him taking the handoff off a read option and taking it 80 yards? Probably not. Uh, he just doesn't have that creativity in his bag. And so he's more of a, of a pass first guy that can run to. And he's a really good athlete. So he will be dangerous with the ball in his hands, but he is not going to look to just go off right away. Um, And, and so I, it's a little different. Um, I, I do think that they're going to get, the, the receivers more involved. The issue is they don't really have many receivers. Um, kind of, it, like, so they have look, Marcus Robinson, who they've been using, yep. um, Duvernay, uh, yeah. Deshaun Jackson. They haven't used a whole lot, yes. but I imagine that they may this week. Yeah, I mean, I mean, listen, we all know the guy to look out for. It's, it's 89, right? I mean, you got to look right. out for Mark, Mark Andrews. Andrews. Um, and like that's who that's who they're going to use a lot in this game. Mark Andrews is going to be the big thing to watch, and they're going to put yeah. Mark Andrews against. You heard Spillane. that, Devin? Mark yeah, they're going to put him against Devin Miles Spillane. I, if I were the Steelers, though, I would be matching the Ravens a little bit here, and I would bring down Terrell Edmonds and try to see if Edmonds can match yep. them. Now, the issue with the Ravens is if you want to do that, you would put KZ on the field and maybe play back and we're on that three safety set, right? Well, they run 13 personnel. So they're going to be three tight ends and you're going to have to go heavy. Um, so that's not going to be, that's not going to happen. So the Steelers are going to have to get creative here. Um, I know in the past they've worked three outside linebackers on. I don't know if that's kind of something they'd look for. Maybe put Malik Reed in there a little bit more. I would if not be he, surprised. Well, he's like, I don't, if he plays, like because he, he seemed yeah. like he was a little hurt. So we'll see yeah, Malik, he's got that how bad. healthy Malik is. So that'll be interesting. I'm a little yeah. worried to see Malik Reed and TJ Watt on the injury report. So I, I agree. Um, obviously, if both of them are out, Jameer Jones will start. Um, yeah. And, and so I, I think this is kind of an interesting game for the Seagulls maybe test out that three inside linebacker set that they've had before out there, um, mm -hmm. where maybe they bring in all of Jack Spillane and Bush at that same time. Um, I think it's possible, especially on early rundowns. Like this should be the Robert Spillane game. If there is one, it's going to be very heavily run defense featured. Yeah. That's where Spillane flies. Right. Um, now he doesn't have necessarily the speed to match some of these guys, but just, just, Run them downhill. Just tell them to run through people's faces. That's Come on, Robert. Robert. Has best. We're rooting for you, Robert. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like let's he, get it done, Robert. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, this should be the a big game for him. He should have yeah. impacts in this game, and he has in the past, of course. That pick six will be the most notable one. Yes. Had, um, but Spillane has had impacts in the past, and so I'm interested to see 
again, different quarterbacks from Lamar and Huntley. Um, people just look at them and, and think, oh, it's the Ravens style of quarterback. Huntley's different. Um, but we'll see kind of where it goes from here. I think I feel pretty decent about the Steelers' ability to slow down the Ravens' offense. I would uh, think that they can do that as long as TJ Watts out there. What's your score prediction? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, with Lamar out, uh, straight up, I think I think the Steelers should win this game. Um, mm -hmm. They're at home. They're mm -hmm. healthier. Um, and, and you got with Khalifa doing the halftime show. Yes, right. Like <laughs> all of this stuff. And listen, even if even if TJ doesn't play, they're still healthier um, because it, it, it appears Ronnie Stanley's not going to play either, um, which is a huge loss, huge <laughs> loss for mm -hmm. the Ravens. Um, and they they have already injuries that are just hurting them right now, right? With Rashad Bateman out. Um, so the Steelers should win this game. Um, I, I truly believe that now it's a rivalry game. It's Steelers Ravens. It's going to be close no matter what. Chris Boswell is um, supposed to be coming back. I yes. hear, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Yeah, we'll um, see if Boz is back. Right, like that's going to be the big thing because those have to one not turn the football over. Period. Kenny Pickett, how are you going to play against this team? Um, how are you going to deal with all these corners that are really good? Um, with Humphrey and, and and then you obviously have a Peters as well. It's the question of that. How does the rookie step up? And this could be the week where, listen, I'm predicting right now. I think Kenny's going to throw a pick this game, uh, straight up. I mean, listen. If would not, it would it be a Ravens Steelers rivalry game without a with a pick no. some turnovers? You know what uh, I mean? It's I'll just, say this. I think Huntley's also going to throw a pick. Um, I think we're going to yeah. see a few turnovers in this game and Kenny it's Pickett's grinding that pine and he is he is he is tempting fate right now he is on an unusually lucky stretch and it's it's revenge because he got so unlucky early in his career with those interceptions so it makes sense it kind of went the other way but at some point it's gonna sit in the middle and I think this could be that game because there are ball hawks in that secondary four of them to be exact um back yeah. there um, Roquan as well at linebacker is a great coverage linebacker. So we'll see on um, that. I do think though that the Steelers are going to be able to run the football. And I think that's going to be the big thing. And I don't yeah. think Tyler Huntley is going to be able to do, you know, a ton against the Steelers defense. Now it's field position is going to be huge in this game because the, the other team has Justin Tuck. Special um, teams. <laughs> and so special teams, special teams, special teams, special teams. Can't let Duvernay get big returns, right? right. Can't let him flip the field on you. You can't let any of that happen. But I do think the Steelers, if they stick to their game plan, which is Kenny Pickett being that game manager, letting Pickens and Fryermuth and, and Johnson win on the outside, and I think they can get some guys uh, open there. And, and riding on Najee Harris and that stable backs, Najee, Benny Snell, um, and Jalen Warren, mm -hmm. and, and you can run the football with good success. I think the Steelers can grind one out, but I'm not expecting a heavy, uh, a big scoring game. I'm not expecting mm -mm. crazy. So I'm going to say Steelers win this one eh, 17 to 14. Like that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, very I'm similar. Game. I'm a little bit higher, closer to 20, but definitely really, really close to the, to that. Like, you know, the kicker, the kickers are going to win this game. Sorry, <laughs> Justin Tucker, Chris Boswell, Matt Wright, whoever I hear Chris is coming back, but um, you know, whoever the kicker is, it's gonna be on on the legs of these guys, is, is really what I'm feeling. As absolutely which is a normal for AC matchup like this. <laughs> it, it's gonna be on the legs of, of the guys this week yeah. and, and flipping the field and the punt game is gonna be big too. So yep. Presley Harvin, who's had Presley, a really I've special. almost called him Percy again. Come on, Presley, I believe in you too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. When we were talking about the win over Atlanta, I mean, do not overlook that unbelievable punt Presley Harvey yes. put on the field at the end of the game. Yes. Put them back at the two yard line and Beautiful. really sealed it for them. Um, so mm -hmm. I thought that was a huge factor, too. Steelers need really good special teams play this week, of course, just because Tucker's on the other side. But and Sims, we're, um, let's, let's run one back. Let's run one back. Let's go. I think he's due. Come on. Yeah, Stevenson needs to get right, too. <laughs> he's been having some good runs, so uh, I'm excited for that. Let everybody know where they can find you online and come and show you some support. Yeah, you can uh, follow me at FB. That's my last name with FB on it. And you can read all my stuff, SteelersNow.com. We do great stuff over there. I got 
tons of stories coming tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, Grinding it out. Yeah, feel free to uh, check it out. Got a little interview with Miles Boykin dropping. Nice. Um, about the Steelers Ravens oh, rivalry. He, That'll he, be cool. That's dope. Um, talking with Deontay a little bit about George Pickens and all of that going on right now. Um, there's a lot that's going to be dropping. So check it out. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Nick. We will be checking out your stuff and can't wait. I will see you on Sunday. At, I almost said Heinz again. AccuSure Stadium. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me, man. As always. Thank you. Oh.